Hey all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor, welcome. Today, I want to show you a full review of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. In my last video, I did an unboxing and impressions video of this. Now, I wanna take a deep dive and look at everything from the A16 to the battery life, to the always on display, all the new features, and then finally get to the new and improved camera system on this device. So if that sounds good, let's dive in. And as a disclaimer, I am not sponsored by Apple. No money changed hands. This video is completely funded by myself. So without further ado, let's get into it. Apple has a brand new A16 chip in this phone, which is based on a four nanometer process. Basically, that means that the die is shrunk a bit, so that should improve battery life and it should improve thermals. The iPhone Pro Max also has a vapor chamber system, which should further help with thermals. And the A16 is a great performer. Apple compared it to the A13 on stage in their presentation a few weeks ago and it's really good. I've been playing Jensen Impact and the game runs flawlessly and it looks buttery smooth. This year's A16 has six cores on its processor and this iPhone has six gigs of RAM. My model is the one terabyte model, so all that combined, it is a really good performer. And here is my Geekbench results if you're interested in those kinds of benchmark result specs. But Keep in mind though that all benchmarks are synthetic and you're really only gonna feel the real world use of it if you use the phone itself. Part of what makes this phone feel so fast is the 120 hertz ProMotion display, which I did not have on my 11 Pro Max. So this is a welcome addition on the 14 Pro Max. It makes animations feel buttery smooth and I really like what this adds to the overall experience of the iPhone. Now let's talk network connectivity because this phone is 5G capable, just like the 13 was. I'm new to 5G, I didn't have it on my 11, and I'm expected more, I guess. I guess my expectations were a little high. I'm getting between 100 and 200 gigabits per second, and I was expecting between three and four, hopefully, but maybe there's some conditions that vary. Location, antenna, range, all those things can play a factor in the speeds that I get. Also, if you're coming from a phone that doesn't have a 5G connection, you will need to upgrade your plan to take full advantage of the speed. So that's just another cost factor to consider when upgrading to a phone like this. On the topic of network, Apple has done away with the eSIM in the US versions of the phone. So there is no SIM card tray on this phone, no physical SIM at all. It is purely electronic and your experience with the transfer will vary based on which phone you have. For me, from my 11 to my 14, it was a very seamless transition. I have AT&T and everything worked flawlessly. I know some of my friends have other carriers and the transition was not so straightforward. They actually had to call their carrier and get it transferred. So your experience may vary until carriers can really get it all figured out and eSIM is more adopted within the industry. The iPhone also features a satellite connectivity feature where you can point it to a satellite if you are stranded or in need of emergency services and it will connect you to a satellite where you can fill out a form and communicate with someone on the kind of distress that you're in and they can come rescue you. This is a brand new feature on the iPhone 14 it is one that I'm not gonna test and hopefully you don't have to test. The iPhone also has a crash detection system which uses a bunch of sensors and pressure gauges to determine if you're in an auto collision. Again, I'm not gonna test it and I hope you never have to too, but it might give you a peace of mind if you are in a crash. It certainly does me and I think this feature will help a lot of people and save a lot of people's lives. Apple has updated the screen this year, so now it is a 1000 nits brightness typical and 1600 nits on the HDR brightness, which is more in line with the Pro X Display XDR. And they also say that there is 2000 nits of brightness outdoors. In my experience in testing this, this is a very small window. If you're just viewing your phone for the first time outdoors, it does reach that 2000 nits peak brightness and it gets very bright, but it will not sustain for a long time, especially if you're doing things like recording video or taking photos, especially on a hot day like it is in Texas. 
the screen will dim very, very significantly. I was taking videos during my testing phase outdoors in 90 degree weather and I could barely see the screen. It got very dim, so just keep that in mind. Apple also introduced the always on display on this iPhone, which I have on my Series 5 watch. I don't use it on my Series 5 watch, not only because it affects the battery life of my watch, but I just don't want to get distracted by it. Same thing applies to the iPhone. It will affect your battery life, and I find it distracting. I really don't like the implementation that Apple did with it. It's still, you can still see the picture. It's not blacked out like some always on displays. So I just disabled it completely. And we can't talk about the display without addressing the Dynamic Island, which is a really dumb name, yes, but it is a really cool feature. And I think it's so cute. Like it adds a level of character to the iPhone that wasn't there and wouldn't have been there if they just added a pill. It just would have been a boring pill and it would have been like everyone else in the industry doing the pill cut out on the front of the display. Apple decided to buck that trend and they put in some really nice animations to the space up top where if you have a podcast open and you minimize it, it will flow up into the dynamic island and you can do various things like tap it and it go back to your application that you were just in or you can hold it to get a special context menu to play pause or do other features based on the app and Apple is opening this up to app providers so that they can do whatever they want on their application when it comes to the dynamic island and i like it a lot it's basically a notification system at the top of your phone it will cut into some videos based on the format of the video if it's a larger scale format video while you're watching a youtube video i did notice that it does intrude a bit and this is quite distracting and it's a problem that i never faced on the notch design on my 11 pro max so that is something to keep in mind Okay, let's talk about battery life because Apple claims that the battery life is much improved in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference between the 11 Pro Max's battery life and the 14 Pro Max's battery life. It still drains in a day. I have to charge it every day. And for me, that's fine, but I was also expecting a little more, maybe like a day and a half, but I'm not really noticing much difference, to be honest, between this and the 11. One thing that is different, though, is this has MagSafe, and it's pretty cool. I have the MagSafe puck, and when I stick the 14 on there, it's solid. Like, I can shake it, and this thing is not coming off, and it will charge it. The 11, I could put it on the charging pad, but it didn't stick as well as it did on this, and it would still charge it because that has wireless charging capabilities as well. Another feature that I find to be such a game changer for me is that the Face ID will now recognize your face in landscape mode. And this is super important for me when I'm putting my phone on a tripod and it's in landscape mode and I want to unlock my face. I don't have to do this awkward turning motion that I did with my 11 Pro Max to unlock the phone every time I wanna capture a video. This wouldn't be an iPhone review without talking about the camera, so let's get into that. Apple has upgraded the camera system in pretty much every way in this iteration of the iPhone. And coming from the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it is truly an amazing upgrade. We have larger sensors, better low light. We have the photonic engine, which is like, uh, I guess, a reimagining of deep fusion. We have a higher resolution. We have better macro mode. We have 4K cinematic mode. There is a lot to be excited for with the cameras. So let's take a look at some clips here and see what it's all about. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys some footage and some shots that I took right here in Finder so that we can just go through these and look at some of them. We're gonna start off with the 48 megapixel sensor because that one is super exciting. To enable the 48 megapixel sensor, you just have to enable the raw mode on the main camera and you're shooting in 48 megapixels. If you're not enabling that, you're shooting in 12. All right, we have this daytime picture pulled up here of this duck and we have a river in the background and some rocks over here there's a guy in the distance this is a really good example shot of the camera capabilities here and i focused right in on the duck so first thing is if we go ahead and we zoom in 
look how far we can zoom in and still see the detail in the duck's face. That is pretty incredible and that is something you could not do in previous iPhones. You could not get this zoomed in here, like this is very close. And we can also take a look at other aspects of the photo, like let's take a look at this person in the background. You can see that they are pretty blurred and that is a result of the aperture changes and the sensor size changes that the camera has gone through. You can also see there's like, these are fish hanging in the background and they're kind of blurry. You can see the foreground. Foreground's pretty clear, that's, that's pretty in focus. It starts to get a little blurry here, but the duck looks really good and we can zoom in really far to that duck. All right, now we're taking a look at a night shot. This is still the 48 megapixel sensor, but it is at night. And first off, you can see the dynamic range is really good looking for a night shot. I mean, look, like these cars are very dark. The ground is very dark and it gets light. Very good dynamic range, but let's start to zoom into things. So I focused in on this smokestack here and you can get pretty close. Like this is how far we started out. And now I'm zooming in and you can see the rungs, the ladder there, and you can get pretty close to it. Let's zoom out. Uh, we can zoom into these bricks and they still retain a lot of detail. We can zoom into like the shiny part here. And if we zoom into the crowd, we get that blur and we can still see that that text is legible. Like it's not legible here. It looks really far here, but you can zoom in and you can practically see the whole text here. Like it gets really clear about here. If you zoom in too far, it's just gonna be a pixelated mess. But yeah, what do you guys think of that shot? Okay, moving on to the macro mode. There have been improvements to macro mode. This is so fun because macro mode is not on the 11. I'm experiencing this for the first time on the 14. And look, like <laughs> I just, shot a picture of some berries. This is in 12 megapixels and these look nice. They, they look, there's a lot of detail there. Um, and I was pretty close to this. this. These berries were like super tiny and there is a lot of detail and you can see that we still get that blurred background because of those aperture and sensor size changes. Mm, looks so good. Okay, let's go on to another macro shot. This is a landscape shot of uh, some flowers and you can see a lot of detail. Again, this is a 12 megapixel shot and this is a pretty close shot. That, that flower was pretty tiny and it looks good. All right, now let's take a look at some ultra wide shots. Here's one in the daylight and you can see that the dynamic range is awesome in this shot. Like the, the ground is dark, the sky is not overexposed, the clouds look very nice and bright and there's so much detail and color in the canoes. Again, this is a 12 megapixel shot on the ultra wide, and you can see lots of detail in the concrete. Uh, this shot looks really good. Here's another ultra wide shot. You can see there's lots of detail in the river. Fantastic dynamic range, 12 megapixels. What do y'all think? And I want to look at the front facing camera specifically at night because there is an improved sensor on the front facing camera. The aperture is a little bit bigger. So I wanted to see what it was like at night and here it is. Uh, this is pretty good. I'm in indirect light. I'm not really, I'm kind of in a shadow. There's not really an overhead light above me, but my face is well lit. Uh, my hair is well lit and you can see the background pretty well. Like you can notice it starts to get pretty grainy when you zoom in because Front facing camera is the weakest of all the cameras so it, it it does still fall apart if you really like pixel peep but i mean as an overall image this looks really good all right are you guys ready to check out some video on the iphone 14 of course you are because video is amazing so let's take a look since we ended on the front facing cameras, I want to do the front facing camera for video. And here is a video of me just kind of walking along the sidewalk and it's pretty dark outside. Like this is a, it's not completely dark, sun's going down, but it's pretty dark. And you can see that there's, there's a lot of grain, 
but it doesn't look terrible. I mean, I wouldn't use this as like a YouTube video, but I mean, it looks okay. Now here's one in the daylight and you can see that this looks much better. The front facing camera really shines in the daylight and there is no graininess. This looks pretty clear. You would not be able to tell that this is a front facing camera shot um, if you were doing this in the daylight. You can even see like my beard there is pretty detailed and outlined. That's pretty cool. It's, it's a good camera. Now let's look at the 14 macro in video. Here is that same flower that I took the macro picture of a while ago. And this is it in macro video mode. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. You can see lots of detail in the flower there. And the background is uh, pretty blurred to give it that separation. All right, here we have two videos side by side. The one on the left is the 11 ultra wide at night the one on the right is the 14 ultra wide at night same location i'm going to play these videos and you can see the difference the ultra wide is probably going to be the one that is the worst performing at night and you can see the difference between the 11 and the 14 here the 11 is just so very dark you can almost you can't really tell anything and the 14 you can start to make out some features and stuff. But again, this is in like pitch black dark. Taking a look at the 14 ultra wide in a little bit more well lit scene. Here is the ultra wide overlooking the river and there's a building in the background. You can see that the ultra wide is performing a little bit better here at night with more light. And then here is the main camera at night and you can see that it is so far ahead of the ultra wide. There is a lot of detail in this shot. All right, now to show you guys something really incredible. There's a new action mode on the iPhones, which is a 2.8K 60 frames per second video mode that requires a lot of light, admittedly, but it really stabilizes the footage, like a lot, a lot. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here. I didn't do any running or anything. I just kind of like flung the phone around and yeah, take a look at the results. So on the left is the iphone 14's camera in the action mode and on the right is the 11 pro max just doing a regular recording of me waving my hand around like an idiot and look at the video on the left compared to the right and it check it out it's pretty crazy all right so i am flinging the phone around and it's not moving on the left that is why i could not believe it when i watched the footage back i could not believe it i thought it was going to be like really bouncy but it was not at all that is an insane amount of movement that action mode is really impressive. Here is cinematic mode on the front facing camera of the iPhone. It is improved to be 4K at 30 or 24 frames per second. Here I'm recording at 4K 30 and it has improvements like the foreground will blur if I put my hand in front, but my face is still in focus and the background is blurred too. I like it a lot. What do you guys think? Does the audio sound good? Does the picture quality sound good? Let me know. And that's my review of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. What did you guys think? What features did you like most? Are you gonna get the 14 Pro Max or the Pro line of the 14 at all? Let me know your comments down below. I appreciate your feedback, so feel free to interact. Share this with your friends, share this with your family, share it with anyone interested in a iPhone or the new iPhones. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you wanna see more, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you for watching.